Welcome to this week's EMBN show. We have a great show lined up for you this week, and I'm joined by Rich Payne from GMBN. How you doing, mate? Yeah, we got a belter of a show. We got Where in the World and some amazing submissions for Bike Vault coming up. Yeah, and we're going to take a look at long travel e mountain bikes too. Ooh. Rich, I think it's pretty crazy how e-bike tech and the bikes have actually moved on over just the last few years. I mean, we've got bikes for every single discipline. We've got cross-country e-bikes, trail e-bikes, enduro e-bikes, and of course, these big long travel downhill bikes too. Oh my too. God. Mm. Yeah, you saw the recent run at uh, Wind Hill. Yes, mate. Yeah, I seen you put a run on your new Canyon Torque on yeah. uh, through the Pro Line and Wind Hill. And check this out, everyone. This looks insane from Chris. Viagra Falls with the new features, top to bottom, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy that run. Some big jumps all the way down, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And you would not want to come up short. <laughs> no, you definitely wouldn't. Good job you are on a downhill e mountain bike. <laughs> Blooming it, mate. And the amount of runs you can get in on one of those bikes is just insane, actually. I mean, the thing I forgot about long travel e bikes is how well they corner, how well they absorb big impacts. I mean, coming off that big sort of step down boner log thing, it's so smooth on that bike and it yeah. literally keeps its speed so Yeah, so well. I guess the weight helps there, doesn't it, in a little bit? It keeps it real nice and planted. Yeah. And you're right. Then when you do get to the bottom, obviously zzz, straight, straight back, back to the top. Remember back in the day when we'd be pushing downhill bikes back to the top and it was not Horrendous, fun. isn't yeah. it? And I actually found out the other day, I snapped my rear mech off of my e-bike on a tree stump as I pulled out of the yeah. line and I forgot how bad it actually oh, is to no. push a bike up a hill. It's did it have walk mode? Yeah, it did have walk mode, oh, but the derailleur gosh. was snapped off, so it wouldn't work. But oh, no! I actually <laughs> forgot how bad it is to push a bike up the yeah, hill. Something horrendous. I haven't done for years and years. No, no, no. Why would you? Why but, would you? But one thing I want to talk about today is that I don't think that those E downhill bikes are purely limited to just downhill or bike parks. I've actually gone out on some pretty big cross country rides on my Kinevo. Yes. <laughs> what? I know you, you're putting a face at me there. Obviously, something Hang that on, mate. you wouldn't do on a normal mountain bike, would you? You wouldn't go cross country no, riding. No, I'd on ride a my cross country bike. bike. But why wouldn't you ride a downhill bike? for a cross country ride. Well, because they're massive, mm -hmm. they're slack, yeah. they're heavy, yeah. they've got generally terrible tires for it, dual crown forks, probably 27.5 inch wheels. Uh, the, the geometry on them, I mean, it's a hefty list. It is, I think, but, you know, when I go out cross country riding, I really enjoy obviously smashing the downhills. Yeah. So I think, that that bike isn't massively different on the climbs. Obviously, you've got the motor to help you up there. And there is, you know, those components that you listed yeah. out will make a difference on the battery range. You yeah. know, you've got big sticky tires, big heavy oh, yeah. wheels, the gear ratios, this, you know, super close ratio. But, but what about the handling though? Because obviously the geometry of these downhill e mountain bikes is a lot slacker than even the trail counterparts. Yeah. So does the geometry make a big difference? I don't find, unless it's super slow, you know, tech stuff, obviously if you're running like a dual crown yeah. fork, like on the Kineva, if you're, you know, winding in and out of the trees super slow, then I don't find the geometry is that bad. Yeah, you might occasionally get the odd pedal strike because you've got quite right. a low bottom bracket, yep. but, you know, I love actually riding my Kinevo on cross-country trails. It's super comfortable as well. You know, you've got the coil shock at the rear, Big sticky tires, nice. low pressure. It's good, not, good job you're not over on GMBN right now. Crikey, <laughs> blasphemy! But, but I could see, I can, I can understand it with that motor yeah. to help you out. Yeah. It almost actually makes it opens up more possibilities on a cross country style ride, I guess. Definitely. I think the thing is with mountain biking is there's always a compromise in the yeah. kit that you run. You know, if you want to go fast on a cross country bike 
uh, a cross country mountain bike, yeah. you need to change the tires to like, you know, if you're doing downhill yeah, stuff. Yeah, but then those downhill tires suck when you come to the climbs. Yes. But with an e mountain bike, there's none of those. Sort of, no, there's no motor, compromises. The really. motor really sort of ne negates most of those bad yeah, points. I guess. Definitely a physical effort, but of course there are other things that are negatives, as I mentioned, like the range. That's the only thing that really sort of disappears. But aside from that, I think they're pretty universal. But should we have a look at some options then, Rich? Yeah, let's you know see. What, what, what have we got bikes? first up then, Chris? Well, first up is Husqvarna Extreme Cross 10. Now this is an amazing bike. Uh, Shimano EP8 motor. It's got the uh, 630 watt-hour batteries full Fox suspension on this bike, front and rear, um, 27.5 wheels, and it's coming in at 7,899 euros. Great looking bike that, isn't it, right? That is an absolute weapon. And I know it's all the 200s there, so 200 mil up front, yeah. 200 mil out back, and 200 mil rotors. Yeah, it's a big hit in, Ooh. big, you know, big yeah. brakes on there, it's gonna stop you as well. So great yeah. bike there from yeah. uh, um, yeah, too right. Husky. From Husqvarna. Yeah, all right, next we've got the, the high bike X Duro Enduro 5.0, and well, that is again 180 mil uh, carbon up front, aluminium rear. Yeah. Uh, the Bosch four motor, 630 watt hour battery. Yeah. Uh, 27.5 wheels coming in at 600, uh, 6,299 euros. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of these bikes are actually running those 27.5 wheels, and that's something we see quite a lot on these gravity style e mountain bikes. A lot of them are obviously switching over to 29ers now, but 27.5. Yeah. Definitely isn't dead when it comes to downhill. Is and just it, is that just because they're stronger, slightly smaller wheel, a bit stronger, a bit stiffer? Yeah, a bit stronger. Obviously, it hasn't got the as great rollover as the 29er, yeah. but I think as a gravity bike, you know, I, I'm all about 27.5. I do like 29 for cross yeah. country, but bike parks downhill, I think the 27.5 is king. You're right. And a bike that is rolling on 27.5 is the new Canyon Talk on. And that's what you just saw me riding yes. in the Windhill video. 175 mil travel, Shimano EP8 motor. This has got slightly smaller battery at 504 watt hours, but this bike is available with a twin battery option. So you get 1,008 watt hours. So you can stick one in your van Whoa. or in your backpack and obviously do some pretty big, uh, big ride with that. And the idea is that the smaller battery is obviously lighter, so you okay. get a more maneuverable kind of bike. Yeah. And to be fair, I've been smashing the laps out on my yeah, talk on at the bike park and I haven't noticed, you know, any Many bike batteries. park laps. Exactly. Whoa. And that has got massive bearings throughout. They've actually upgraded all the linkage and the chain stays and the seat uh, stays and sizes, so it doesn't flex as well. Um, yeah, and it's a great option, obviously, you know, if you're looking at a big travel uh, bike with a couple of batteries. Yeah, and then finally the Specialized Canevo. Now, this is a 180 mil monster of a bike yeah. with a 700 watt hour battery and the Bros motor in there as well. So, you know, dual crown uh, up front, but you can get it with a single crown as yeah, well. Yeah, you can. Uh, what else? 27.5 wheels, but it can go mullet if you fancy a bit more party yeah. party out back business up front. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and the comp model starts at 5,800 GBP. Yeah, definitely a great option there if you're mm. looking for a big hitting bike. But let us know what you think about e-downhill bikes or big travel bikes. Do you own one or are you thinking of getting one? They are definitely worth considering. Okay, Chris, ignore what I'm wearing, but you are wearing a very fancy new EMBN t-shirt there. Yeah, the EMBN Core t-shirt, Rich. Ooh. We've got all this stuff on our merch store. And if you haven't been there, you need to check it out. Got everything on there. Hoodies, stickers, face Whoa. masks, mud guards. What? You name it, you can get everything EMBN on the merch. I'm gonna have to head over. Definitely. What have we got on Sunday then, Rich? Well, actually, this is a video that I'm in and it's oh, nice. the Global Climb Off. Wow. Yeah, loads of us from all the different channels got together. Steve picked out this crazy hill and we're gonna all try and climb up it. So it's well worth a watch. That nice, one. that sounds like a pretty crazy day out. I heard GCM, we were uh, struggling on that one a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Ollie was not impressive. Not a, not a fun day out. <laughs> and on Monday, we're heading into the workshop to do a deep clean and refresh your motor. Everything you need to know about getting into that motor and giving it a quick refresh and a clean. We've got some great feedback from Steve's Power Hour video, Chris. Yep. Billy says, did a Power Hour yesterday on the wall in Avan, South Wales, 11 miles, 1,450 foot, climbing in an hour and nine minutes with a little bit of traffic on the trail, entirely in eco. Uh, on his 2020 Levo and a cracking little workout, he says. Yeah, definitely an hour in eco is definitely going to be a Whew. big workout. That's some pretty big figures there, you done. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be uh, interesting to see your heart rate on that one. We've got a great comment here from Ian Horse Kelly saying exactly what e-bikes are for. Who wants to push a mountain bike up a hill to go down the hill 
the same hill again. I certainly don't. I bought my e-bike to get to these beautiful places that you'd usually be pushing a bike up to get there. Give me that type of ride and scenery every single day. Yeah, man. exactly yeah. like we were saying earlier. Why would you push exactly. push a mountain bike uphill anymore, really? Yeah. yeah, and it definitely does take you to some amazing you know, scenery. You get to the top of some of those climbs, you're totally blown away. Yeah. If you do two or three of them a day, it's gonna blow your mind. Whew. And you still got a bit of gas left in you to get back down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Better and Better says, looks like a beautiful ride. I'm curious about the filming logistics. Do you stop and wait for the camera operators to get into pos position on each leg? Or do you ride it straight through with the camera operators pre-planned to be in specific positions? And the route plan so they can easily get ahead of you. Obviously you have to have the chest mounts for places where they can't get ahead of you or can you get to them all? I'm imagining at least two teams. Ooh, good question. Well. It's actually a bit of a, it depends how many, you know, films we've got on our film crew, but yep. sometimes we have drones, sometimes we have two or three camera yep. operators, but usually it's just one cameraman and usually an e-bike and they're either shoot from behind or get in front yep. of us and wait for us to come down here. And as you said, you know, uh, getting those little bits on the GoPro as well help, you know, get that yeah, whole ride yeah, yeah. on there. So yeah, good question. Nice. I love hearing all those comments for, you know, from you guys on all the recent videos. Get involved in the comments box down below. It could be your next week's show. Right then, Chris, send of the week time. What have we got? We have got a great entry in from Luke here and he's getting really sendy on his Levo. Check out this big dialed in, no hander. The Forest of Dean, big extension on there. Oof, yes. Wow, that is pretty mental. And also shredding the downhill tracks at Style Cop as well, looking mega stylish as well. Nice one. Yeah, got some great entries in from, you know, the, you guys this week. Keep them coming. Use the upload service if you want to get featured on the show. Out and about time, Chris. Let's see what everyone's been getting up to. Where have they been going this week then, Chris? Well, we've got some great entries in, as always, this week, Rich. First up, we've got Marcus here doing a bit of action in the snow on his Spectral Whoa. on 8.0. Uh, he's out in in Finland. It's got a ah. massive name there. I'm not going to try and pronounce. <laughs> Come on, Ke let's hear it. Kelly John Kangas. Nailed it. Yvaskla <laughs> Oh, there's more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> since Steve has been putting down winter snow riding, uh, almost every episode, we decided to put together a little home video just for him and check this out. It is an absolute banger. Look at that. It looks amazing riding in the snow on a knee oh bike. I'm jealous and not at the same time because it's really cold by the looks of it. <laughs> Definitely. It's a bit different than snow riding. I think those guys get out yeah. there, you know, to what we do in the, the UK. Norm, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Someone else who's been having a bit of fun in the snow is Martin here on his 2020 Kinevo. He's out in Flame in the French Alps, riding Ooh. and pushing and crawling up a little bit and absolutely zooming down. Now, Whoa. I've done a few bits on snow. I think the fastest I've ever been, I did the Mega Avalanche a few years yeah. back and that first glacier. Oh, it's rapid. That's the one, yeah. isn't it? I suppose you've done that yeah, race I a few have, times yeah. as well. Just full tripod trying to stay up. Exactly, not fun. No snow here. No, exactly. Yeah, we're out in Utah here um, with Mark. He's got a 2020 uh, Orbea Wild. He's on the Zen Trail in St. George in Utah. Very nice. Uh, his mate, Jared, is on a 2021 Pivot Shuttle. Uh, doing some black diamond chunks on the top of Mesa. Now, Ooh. I think I've ridden that trail as well. Really? A few What's years it like? ago. Yeah, super gnarly. I had a massive crash on it. I smashed my head right on the temple, I remember. Oh. I just had an open face helmet and it literally just caught right here. So it's oh, pretty, uh, nasty. pretty close to it, but it looks like they're having fun out yeah, there. Yeah, cool. And the final shot we've got here is from Darren. He's on a specialized Kinevo and a white G180 and the Bulch exploring with Mike Neal on the e bikes. And that looks like a you know a big bold area out uh, out there, doesn't it? Looks yeah, looks well tight. Ride. Looks fun. Nasty weather as always from Wales, but yeah, some great entries this week. Keep them coming. Use that upload service and get featured on the show. Okay, Chris, it's that time. It's bike vault time. I know guys and girls out there have been sending in some crazy mm -hmm. bikes. So. 
Why don't you kick things off? Let's take a look at them. Yeah, and I think you got taught by one of the best in the business, by Mr. Martin Ashen. He definitely knows a nice or a super nice yeah, when he sees one. Yeah, got some high standards. <laughs> <laughs> so kicking things off, we've got Jeff here with his Rocky Mountain Altitude Custom. He's out in Warner Scar Ooh. in South Lakeland in the UK. Only got a nice last time because of my bag being dumped behind in the shop. Thought oh. I'd give you something worthwhile. And I think this is a pretty banging shot, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to upgrade you there, but you now get a super nice. If I had a bell, I'd ring it. Ding, ding. Super nice. Look at that, <laughs> kicking it off. Yep. Next up, we've got Michael here with a Cannondale Habit Neo 3. He's out on Afan Forest, South Wales. First ride at Afan. Got a ride in on Penhide as well as him putting 60k in on a Whoa. day. So, pretty big ride. Pretty epic shot, Rich. What are you thinking? Yeah, I, do you know, I love the stealthed out look of that thing. Mm -hmm. And blue skies, and you did 60k on it. That's a super nice again. Wow, given the way. Nice. Yeah, I'm being okay. Well, I'm going to have to crack <laughs> down on him. I think you're struggling. Uh, we've got this one in from Andrew here. He's got a 2020 Merida E160. He's out in Derby in Tasmania, Australia, on holidays with the families, just about to drug. Uh, drop into Deadly Bugger Trail. Whoa, okay. <laughs> so it sounds a pretty nasty trail, but yeah. it's a pretty epic shot again, isn't it? Yeah, they're making it hard for me to do any nices. I've, I'm going to go super nice again. Super nice. I do have a bit of a soft spot for readers, actually. Yeah, I like yeah, 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 they're great they're bikes, nice. aren't they? Next up, we've got uh, Jose here. He's out in Bilbao in Spain, Trek Rail 9, exploring new trails and setting up new limits for my first e-bike. And... Rich. Well, I mean, it's a cracking picture, isn't it? Look at that, like the orange bike with the mm -hmm. stunning background. I mean, it's another super nice. I mean, Mark taught me well. I, so send in some not as good pictures, please, because you're making this hard for me. <laughs> Next up, we've got Domenico here. He's got a YT decoy. He's out in San Diego, uh, taking advantage of the sunlight poking through the trees. So we've just got that sun peeking through yeah, the top left of that shot, Rich, I think, again. <laughs> <laughs> It's a super, and I, I can't even give it a nice, even if I, I don't want to, but it's too nice not to. It's a super nice. Super well nice. Well done. <laughs> and then we've got Anchor here with a Mondraker Crafty R2021 oh model. On. Bit of graffiti going on yeah. in Romania, Brass, uh, Brasov, resting after the ride. So a couple of nice Mondrakers there. Yeah, do you know what? Uh, it's, you guys actually smash it out of your pictures on EMBN. So super nice to you as well. <laughs> well <nice>. done. <laughs> Well, and another one, Rich. This could be another super nice. Oh, Don't no. end that streak, but this is Gaza with his 2019 Norco site. He's out in Carlinford in New South Wales, Australia. Had quite a lot of wet weather recently. Managed to get a quick ride in uh, with some record flooding on the trails. And Whoa. It's a, another amazing shot. I mean, I mean the waterfall in the background. Waterfalls, green, yeah. lush. All right, super nice. Well done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got Jake here. He's out in Briarley Hill on his white E150. Just fitted new Maguras and couldn't resist the shot whilst out riding. That's a pretty nice trail. But nice looking bike. But it's non drive side. Oh. So it's a nice. <laughs> you I've got, I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to, mate. It's a no, uh, and there we go. Look, another non drive side. Mm, there we go. So we've got this one in from Mark here. He's got a high bike. 6.0 all mountain. He's out in San Jose in California, 3,500 feet high. Just look at that little speck in the distance. You can see the city down below him there. Um, what are you thinking, Rich? Well, I, I am, I'm not too keen on non drive side pictures. <laughs> so it's a nice again, but it is a nice bike and it's yeah. a good shot, but you've got to, got to flip it around. Definitely. Well, going back through these entries, yeah. what are you thinking is going to take bike of the week. Oh, Some strong ones there, isn't it? It was. What was the, the orange, was it the orange trek with the real stunning background? Which one, go back to, where's that one? So this is that one, that's from Jose. Oh, there we go, yeah. And we had that big shot in from um, Jeff with the Rocky Mountain right oh, at the yeah. start as well. Oh no. You choose, I can't choose. I think bike of the week for me, I think it's, it's close between the trek and the Rocky Mountain, but I think Jeff's gonna take it with his Rocky Mountain altitude custom. Nice. Yeah, great looking bike, great looking background. It pretty much sums up e mountain biking for me. So yeah. nice one. Yeah, well done, bud. Yeah, and that's it for this week's oh. show. Let us know what you think about yeah. big travel e mountain bikes and the rest of the stuff from this week's show. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Get involved in the comments down below. Love to hear if you ride a big downhill bike or if you're thinking about getting one. Let us know. Get involved, and we should catch you next week. Cheers. Cheers.